asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. Let's introduce our guest then today. I'm really looking forward to this because I followed this with great interest over the last few months. Our guest is originally from Hebden Bridge and has come to, I suppose, national attention in recent months because her story and her family's story has been featured heavily in the national media, television and newspapers here. Um, her family were featured in a documentary about parenting and her and her husband, Lewis, well, they homeschooled their seven children. Some of the children are very young, but the ones old enough for schooling are schooled at home. And they try not to impose strict rules, regulations and boundaries on the children. It's really interesting, this. Typically enough, and I mentioned this at the beginning of the programme, the media has sensationalised it. And if you do a, a Google search for the story, you'll see headlines about feral children and all of that. But I think the reality is probably very different from uh, the headlines. And I'm really looking forward to meeting uh, Gemma Ronsley, who's not too far away in Hebden Bridge. Gemma, welcome to the programme. How are you? Hi, Richie. You OK? I'm good. What's it like then to... I mean, I, I don't know, you see, because I do what I do and it's very quiet and it's just me and my studio. And, you know, outside of, outside of my circle, very few people know about me or know who I am. What's it like all of a sudden to be all over the media, people talking about your parenting, pointing fingers, asking questions? I imagine it's been a bit of an experience. Yeah, I mean, we're not too bothered about it because I don't know if you've ever been to Hebden Bridge, but like it's Beautiful. just such an amazing place like everyone's so cool and just chilled out um people are just really accepting here so and we're just like in the middle of the countryside so it's not to, not affected as locally and in our real life and our friends are like ace and lovers so that's all just been normal um and with regards to like being in the media and stuff like it's been like really good to try and like get my get our lifestyle across to others because genuinely we want to show people what this kind of life is like because it's really awesome um, and we want other people to know about it in case like this could suit them and it could improve their way of life and also when I first started embarking on this way of life because it wasn't straight away you know it's been like a learning process and um going in confidence but when I first died I had no idea you could like do this stuff I was like really like I, like I was insecure about it all people would like be judgmental and when you're not like I thought that's still because I wasn't really confident in what I was doing because I, I was only just embarking on it I hadn't seen the results yet Um it was quite daunting you know I was having to answer for myself and defend myself um, so it's been great to like have the opportunity to show people what this is like. Um, but the only negative thing is, you know, like I always knew the media was full of it, but yeah. I never knew how much it's mental. Like they're saying that the kids have tattoos and um, that um, they're allowed to f and blind um, and all just all kinds of rubbish and. What really, like, you wouldn't believe it. So when I actually did the interview with the woman from the Sunday Mirror, the only reason I did it was because they were like, oh, just we do it, help us promote it. And I thought, well, we've done the show, we might as well help. <clears throat> and we were really proud of the show, you know, we felt like it captured the happiness and things here. It didn't capture the educational side, but it certainly captured, you know, the spirit of things. Um, and so she came to interview us. And she was late and she came in and she was like a vulture, like sitting there poised, like desperate, you know, to just catch us out on something. And so she was asking all the kind of provocative questions and she said, like, would you let him have tattoos? And I was like, yeah, when they're old enough, like, that's just normal. Like, you know, some people would say, like, how can you how can you say no one way or the other? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No or yes, because when they're old enough, they'll choose for themselves anyway. But what I was saying was, yeah, when they're old enough, we'd, we'd say, yeah, that's cool, get a tattoo. Um, and, I, and then I said, it's interesting, though, because they know that me and Lewis are cool with tattoos because we have them. When we've asked them, like, oh, would you get a tattoo when you're older? 
only two of them said they might. And I know obviously we've got the baby um, and Zephyr, um, but like um, Hunter is very opinionated at six years of age. Like, so he knows his mind, to be honest with you. Um, and um, so does Pearl, Phoenix, Sky and Finlay. And yet only two of them said they might do. Um, and I found that really interesting. And when I asked them why, they were like, well, you know, does it hurt? And I was like, well, yeah. And they're like, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, if it's going to hurt, like, I don't think it's worth it. And then Sky was saying, well, I might regret it. And then I'd have to get rid of it. And that's going to hurt even more. And yeah, I don't think I'll bother. And what I was trying to say to us, it's really interesting. When there's nothing to rebel against, rather than making decisions based on, you know, well, if you're saying I can't, then I'm flipping gonna. Very <laughs> interesting. Even if they don't want Very to. interesting. Um, so, so they're applying critical thinking, basically, Gemma. What do you think of that? that tattoo? They were applying critical thinking to the tattoo issue. Your, yeah. son, your son said, well, yeah, yeah, I might not be able to get it off and I might not like it and I might be stuck with it. Yeah. That's critical thinking, right? Yeah, exactly. So rather than just kind of, you know, being, you know, the like sheep kind of being told what they will and won't do while they're young enough. And then when they get older, they're like, sort of like, well, screw you. You know, I'm going to fucking do what I want to do, <laughs> even if it's not what they really want to do. And then actually our guys are like, oh, OK, so we can do that. So. Yeah, just I don't think I'm I'm bothered, and that's it. They're making decisions based on what they genuinely think, and I just think that's great because they're able to start formulating their own ideas, and they realise that they are valuable. Their thoughts are valuable. They are important. They are individuals. They are unique. Um, and then yeah, the other one was that they could f and blind, and basically, um, I don't know what I can see on your social. So, um, Zephyr said. Um, S H I T E. <laughs> yeah, he said it like that. Did he? He um, said it the no, Irish way. He said it the Irish way. Good. That kind of way. Yeah. Um, and and he <laughs> and he's only far, and he said that word, and she was like, "What did he say?" And he's done. And it's like, do you know one of them? Like when he never says that, and like that flippy moment. What a day! What a day to do it. That's when he yeah. chose to say it. And um, I was like, "Oh," I said um, he just said such and such, but. I kind of hit my stride and I said to be honest he's probably heard it from me like when I've been in the kitchen I've burnt myself or when I'm in the car and I've like pulled out by accident I said I don't I try not to but you know I'm human um and she went oh what are you gonna do would you give him a good old clip round the ear like that and I was just like no no I said um I'll just explain to him that um you know that that that's not an acceptable word to use because people might find it offensive and that I shouldn't say it either and then I said, I'm going to give him the responsibility of being like the sort of swearing monitor. So like making sure that nobody else is swearing, um, including myself. And so that kind of puts him in a position where he feels like, oh, I'm the swearing monitor. I'm yeah. important here, you know. And um, she just put that door out to F and blind. And I was just like reading the stuff. And then she's like passed it on to other newspapers and they've just reprinted it. People are going mental. People are just like, oh, this is shocking. And it's like, oh, for goodness sake, because of this woman and what she decided to write, the whole message has just been lost. But it hasn't at the same time. I have, I am absolutely, like, overwhelmed by what happened after the show. So literally for, like, two weeks, I had my head down on my phone responding to messages and the amount of people I had that got in touch to say either they would they were wanting to do it, but they felt a bit isolated, they weren't sure. And after seeing our family and seeing how like well adjusted the kids were and happy, they decided they were gonna like take the step. Or they were already um homeschooling or home educating actually, because I don't like to call it schooling because it's not a school. But um like the families were against them and things, and then a lot of them, the families had kind of seen like they'd like you know like Finlay you know he's really articulate he's really mature and they'd kind of observed this child and they were like you know actually this this can work it, you know and they were getting support from the family. Gemma, this is really. I even had, you know, I had a lesbian lady. Sorry to interrupt. Me and she was saying that. Um, oh, sorry, go on. No, my apologies. We we, we we just lost one another just briefly there. Um, I, I thought I'd lost you and you came back in. Sorry about that. I'm very interested in 
the response you've had to that and I want to talk more about that in a second because I yeah. I have this kind of feeling and theory because of the amount of correspondence the programme gets sometimes about yeah. this issue. I have a feeling that there are a lot of people with young children whom are not happy with them going yeah. to school for any number of reasons and I want to talk yeah. about that but I just want to remind our listeners Gemma Ronsley is live on the programme Gemma and her husband Lewis they home educate you see I was listening yeah not exactly a, home <laughs> educate uh, their seven children and they were featured in the national press and in a documentary about it Gemma has been describing the rather scurrilous way the press behaves and I know a lot about it because I used to work in mainstream media the press come with their minds already made up and they tried to yep. fit things around the story. And they did yeah. make it look like, you know, that it was mayhem and chaos in Gemma's home yeah. and that the children were feral. They used that word. Yeah. Um, but I don't believe oh, that yeah. to be true. This, this, is, this is mad stuff. What I want to dig down into is, yeah. what was it that made, not made you, but why did you and yeah. Lewis decide... Well, this is the way we're going to go. Was it personal experiences that you had yourself, Gemma, in school? Yeah. Why did you decide that this, because it's a hugely important decision, obviously, and I'm sure you never yeah. took it lightly for a minute. So why did you do it? Yeah, um, so what I would say is it's been a journey and a metamorphosis, really. Like, So my kind of experience growing up was, like, I was fine in school, actually. Like, I never got bullied. and I've, I've always been, like, quite outgoing, so I kind of stuck up for other people that were bullied. Um, school was like I wanted to be doing like things I was interested in but I'd get pulled away from those to do the things that we were told we have to do like I just wanted to be immersed in art um, but you know like having to do things that I didn't care about and I knew that I never would care about um, really sucked my mum I just didn't feel loved by my mum my dad was violent on a number of occasions and she never like did anything about it and so I grew up feeling like so unvalued, un unimportant, like I didn't matter. And so I behaved in a way that I didn't matter. So for like, oh, from probably age 13 upwards to when I had the kids, I was just a, like a, just wild, but like just in a careless way, like I just didn't care about myself at all. Um, and I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, which I think is completely normal. Like, we don't need to be deciding at an early age. But, yeah, I wasn't living a good life um, doing, you know, drinking, trying drugs, this, that and the other. Um, and then I had my own children. Like, I had an eating disorder and things like that. And I had my own children. And at one point, like, in the early days, I still had an eating disorder. And I remember Sky just looking at me and she was like, oh, mummy, your, your dinner's really small. And at that moment instantly clicked and I was cured because I just thought I have such a massive influence here like on this little life she's so important so I was just like that's over that's done and you know from that moment on just everything started clicking into place and I tried all different ways of bringing them up so like when the letter came to send them to school I just was like oh no this oh no <laughs> I don't want this but I had no idea I could homeschool I didn't even know about it um, so I like got on board with the school thing, sent them, hated it. Teachers were flipping useless. It was just ridiculous. It was just so lame. And um, I realised I was teaching them more at home. Um, and so I kind of, I was like, in the end, just so many things happened that I just thought this is rubbish. And I just like, you know what, I'm going to do it myself. And the teacher, the head teacher, he was like, well, I'll have to report you to the LEA. I had no idea who the LEA was. I was terrified. Turns out it's the Learning Education Authority. You know, amazing. They were just like, oh, no, this, you know, this is you're doing a great job. We're really like, this is awesome. You're doing really well. Um, and so I just cracked on with that. And when I first started, though, I was running it like a high school because I was so anxious about, oh, my gosh, I've taken on this big responsibility. You know, like, oh, my gosh, it's all on me. You I have done do the right, right thing because yeah. I didn't know anyone else. And um, so started like kind of doing it really intensely and it was a lady called Sue Reed from the LA and she was like you're doing loads is this what you the way you want to do it and I was like no but I'm just I don't know what to do that's one of the reasons we did the show because I didn't want people in that position I was in I wanted people to get that support where they can go look this is how it's being done by this woman and her husband and it's working so we can chill out and we can do this and it's going to be good 
but I did all the things like you know like controlled crying and um, where you try and put your baby to bed and you walk away and then you go back and put them back in bed if they get up didn't work hated it so then I started co-sleeping um uh, with in the beginning um with breastfeeding my mum was really unsupportive she was like that baby's starving because she was small but that's just natural she, that's just the way she was in the end I ended up breastfeeding right up until they decided to stop um it's just been so you know it's been this gradual thing of me lacking so much confidence in myself and as time's gone along um and I've cut ties with my family and I've started like just trusting in myself that's when I started to like go you know what do this do this your way and I can't believe the results like my kids are amazing this family environment I live in is amazing and I'm not just saying that like it is and that's why I wanted to share it because I'm so proud that I've done this and I can't believe how it's worked they're so well adjusted but they're so like well behaved but I don't mean in the sense of like I've told them what to do like as in like they're living under this like reign of fear they're just really well behaved because they've been brought up to be good human beings to ha to have conver like it's a dialogue between us where I don't just go well you don't do that get to bed you shouldn't punish your kids by sending them to bed anyway a bed should be a place of calm and peace where you enjoy going um if they do something that I would consider not to be ideal sit them down and we talk about it and by the end of it they're like oh yeah yeah I understand you know and they're kind of you know that's the way to do it not just like laying down this law it is that authoritarian with parenting does not work and then you've got like if they're getting the authoritarian like with being brought up at like dealing with teachers at school then they've got that at home can't talk to the parents can't talk to the teachers the only who they've got to talk to their peers but what are their peers going through same stuff they're going through and they're only young so they're going through all this stuff without life experience what they really need is to be able to come and talk to the parents so having this kind of relationship where all the barriers are broken down they know like how much they're loved. I'm not saying other children don't know that they're loved who don't have this way of parenting, but like they know they're loved, but they know that they're valued, that they're important, that their opinions matter, you know. And as a result, it's just ended up making like these kids who were just fantastic. Everywhere we go, everyone we meet, they have something to say about the kids and their behaviour and their like the way that like they can have proper conversations with people because they're around me and Lewis a lot and other just people do you know what I like about it as well like in school people sort of say like how will they cope when in the real world it's like are you kidding me they think school's the real world like all a lot of people all the same age forced to be together for at least six hours a day five days a week um, basically under the authority of some individual that the head teacher has decided to assign to the post. They've not been voted in in a, like in a de democratic sense, have they? They've just been yeah, given the yeah, job yeah. by <laughs> this person, yeah. you know, and they're looking after your kids all day. And it's like, I was that the real world? The real world is where, you know, you get up and you live life and you make decisions and you meet all kinds of people and you do all kinds of stuff that's real that's being in the real world you know and they have to do jobs here they've got to chip in that's part we do have rules it's like you Libby chipping um because that's real life isn't it if you don't work you don't earn you know and well, that's you know, what we teach them it's interesting it's interesting let me just again remind our listeners Gemma Ronsley yeah. I'm gripped by this ordinarily I'd be interjecting and saying stuff but I'm sitting here and I'm just absolutely <laughs> gripped by this Gemma Ronsley is live with us tonight from Hebden Bridge, which which we did visit um, late last year, the future Mrs. Allen and myself. It is absolutely stunningly Aww. beautiful up there. It's lovely, Love it. and um, we look forward to going up there again real soon for a for a day trip. It's only around the corner from where we are now. Gemma okay. and Lewis have seven, and they're beautiful children. I've just sent a, a picture of you and the children from the papers to uh, my friend Jean Anne. In uh, she's in Aww. Cleggan in the west of Ireland. I mean, they are beautiful, wonderful. Beautiful children, healthy, vivacious-looking yes. children. 
Gemma and Lewis yeah, are, they, are... They get that special suntan, you know, that you get from being outside. From being outside, right. And Gemma and Lewis yeah. are home educating their seven children. The media did a pretty nasty job yeah. of saying they can eat what they want and all this sort of stuff, which, of course, threw up images of crisps and chocolate. But it's not true. Gemma and Lewis are vegans yeah. and they choose what to eat from a healthy range of uh, of food, which is, which is really good. I'm very interested, Gemma, in how little blowback you had from the so-called local authorities. This is very interesting to me that they were very supportive of you. Because I, I have this image in my yeah. head of, God forgive me for saying it, but I have this image in my head of social workers turning up, demanding to see yeah. the children. You've not had to put up with any of that. No. Do you know what really shocked me, though? Within the home education community, um, there were some people that weren't supportive. Uh, and the reason for this is there's a private member's bill that's being pushed through Parliament at the moment. And basically what they are proposing is that all home educators need to be registered because at the moment you only need to be registered if your children were ever in school. So if your children have never been registered in a school, you don't need to be known to anybody. So I think they have concerns around safeguarding. Um, and what the home educators are saying that aren't registered is that that's not fair because just because the home educated doesn't mean that they um, are doing anything wrong to their children. Yes. Um, and that there's children that are in school that are being mistreated and nobody may know about that. My stance on this, controversially to them, is that I think from my experience of being registered, it's fine. I know other people have had bad experiences and that's down to that's something we need to tackle and deal with, but that's something we should deal with as a community. And um, the more people that are registered and that step forward, the more of us there are to deal with the government um as a collective and they can see then that there's quite a lot of us. Um but I just think, you know what, for the sake of seeing someone from the LEA once a year or sending them a letter once a year, because that's all it is, um, they don't come and judge you either. They're just like they're just kind of doing their bit, you know, they're kind of like, it's kind of like, all right, hi, <laughs> how's it going? Yeah, cool, you're all happy, it's all good. And um, well, can I, Gemma, can I jump that, in? Can I jump in there just briefly? Let me yeah, jump yeah. in. Can you understand why others are a bit concerned about it? Now, the reason I say this is we've had this named person nonsense in Scotland, which has been sent back and is still in um, discussion. It's in limbo at the moment. But people fear that, yeah. yeah, it might be once a year or twice a year for the time being, but yeah. ultimately the state doesn't... I, well, this is my opinion. I should say this is my opinion. I should be honest. It's my opinion yeah, yeah. that they ultimately don't want the likes of you or the likes of me, because if we're ever blessed with a child, we'll be going down the road you've gone down. And I don't think they awesome. want that. They don't want that. Uh, Gemma and I think it might be all cuddly and touchy feely early early on but I think I'd be very worried about the registering and I'd be very worried about the state appointing people to come to check up on you to make sure that you're doing what you should do that's just my take on it what would you say to people who are concerned about that um yeah what I would say is that so for example like say you were just like um a bit shaky about it so you put your child in school and about six months later you went no no I should do this and you took them out and you're already in the system you're part of that system yeah um and you're only the only thing you did differently to the person who didn't send them was you just a little bit wobbly about it you're then known to them and say that they started going right for those that are registered we want to start really tightening things up then there's only a small percentage of people potentially that are going to be standing up and fighting for their rights and I think that as a community we should all stand together and I think if I think if the government can see as well that there's a lot of the, I wonder if it's like a census as well you know just because they want to know how many are actually home educated and I wonder if they're trying to find out how many they are and what's the position there and I think that if we all sort of step forward and go here I am because it's, it's like why should we hide away as well like this secret dingy dodgy world it's not it's a beautiful world and I think that if we all kind of step forward and go here we are and also, if you try to mess with us and start telling us what to do, right? Every single one of us is going to oppose you. Honestly, I'd rather leave the country. I will leave the country if they start imposing restrictions upon us as home educators, or I will stand and fight. And if my fight doesn't win, then I will leave. 
or I'll stay here and say I'm not doing it what you're going to do about it and if it all came down to it I would leave because I care that much about it but I think that you know we've got to all stand up and fight together I think we shouldn't be hiding in fear why are we fearing the government like you know what I mean it's like why are we fearing the government let's stand up to them and say no you're not going to flip and tell us what to do you're not actually going to do that there's a lot of us and I tell you what it's a movement that's growing as well and I saw it in the news the other day that a lot of parents are actually withdrawing the kids from doing SATs exams as well. So one way or the other, even parents that aren't, um, removing, aren't removing their children from school are saying, you know what, this is too much. But I totally respect the opinion as well of the people that don't want to be registered. This is just my opinion. Well, I like and, it, Gemma. You've, you know, you've articulated that very well. You've made a very good, you've given a good reason. You've made a good argument for 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 registering you know safety security and numbers just a couple before we yeah, talk a couple of things before we we um we, we talk about how how this is growing because we did touch on that earlier just a couple of things mm. very good friend of mine has a young son now he's yeah. not going to home educate because his son is enjoying school but yeah. the parents are annoyed at the ridiculous amount of homework that he's coming home with at mm-hmm. weekends it's dreadful and I, I you know I yeah. said to my friend is it you know just a, a bit of homework are you exaggerating and he said no it is horrendous I've mm-hmm. gone in there yeah. and I've told him that he's not doing it you know I, I, I'll do verbal games with him we'll play crosswords and puzzles and stuff but he ain't yeah. doing all that homework so that's just one thing yeah. now there is um, somebody listening called Craig and Craig says Really liking listening to Gemma, but I'm going to disagree. I am not in favour of homeschooling myself. However, Craig says, keep them home with the parent in attendance for the first six or seven years. But after that, I'm not sure it does them any good not to be aware of the way the world that their parents have detached from operates. What, what do you think of that? What do you think of what Craig says? Again, again, it's like I'll go back to the point I made before. Um, the parents aren't detached from the world we're out in the real world the kids are detached from the world they're in a building all day you know for five days a week I agree that is not the real world they're just around other kids their age in the real world you don't just mix with people your own age you don't and people sort of say like oh well you know how will they deal with authority flipping it they're not going to want to be unemployed and live in a skip are they you know what I mean if their boss says to them you know can you just go do such and such they're just going to go and do it. If the boss is being unreasonable and being a bully, then I would hope that they would stand up for themselves and not accept that. It's ridiculous to think that they're not going to be a manage in society. They're, they're in society. It's the kids that are in school that aren't getting the opportunity to think for themselves um, and express themselves. They're the ones that, you know, could end up struggling um, in the real world. What are we on about the real world? You know, this is the real world. The real world is everywhere, but certainly not within the confines of a school. Like um, I like that answer. I should be I should be a bit more objective here, but I can't be because <laughs> because I've done so many shows on this without speaking to too many people like you. I spoke to a lady two years ago who's home educating, and she was lovely, and we had a good chat. And I did put the devil's advocate position to her, but I can't pretend yeah. to be objective because I like your answers, and I I do see that. And it is an old friend of mine who who made me look at this. You know, it's it's an old yeah. mate of mine who's written a lot about education. And he talks about yeah. basically schools, sadly, and it's not down to the teachers, it's down to the oppressive environment that's been inflicted on teachers themselves. Yeah, yeah, But, yeah, it's, but it, it's system servers they're creating. They're, they're creating yeah. children to come out and to obey yes. and not to challenge and not to question. That's my fear. And that's why I wouldn't hesitate yeah, oh, to go down the, the road. They're going love it, don't they? Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, Gemma. Sorry, I've lost you a bit there, but... Yeah, that's it, isn't it? It's the government. They don't want people just walking around thinking for themselves. They want people to be kept in line. And this might sound like, ooh, conspiracy theories. No, the government need everybody to just stay in line. Let's all keep it nice and how it is. Don't, you know, don't disrupt the, you know, the, the situation. Let's just keep it all nice, do as you're told. And they must feel very nervous about a lot of kids being with the parents and the parents being able to go, do you know what, this this lo- this world's a load of rubbish. Let's actually, like, change the world. Let's change things. Let's, you know, stand up for ourselves. Let's, you know, let's empower ourselves. Um, so I believe the government want kids in school. They want, they bombard them with education 
40, what is it like? How many GCSEs do they do? It's at least nine, is it? At least nine or ten? I think How so, can you fucking, yeah. yeah. What, what on earth is going on there? What Nine or ten GCSE subjects that they're expected to excel in and there's no room for them to actually think or breathe or even exist because they're flipping, they're doing, they're at school all day and then they're coming home, like, you know, you, your friend said, they're coming home, they've got all this homework to do. Then they probably try to do some, like, activities on a weekend maybe, you know, like they want to go dancing or whatever, trying to squeeze in seeing friends. Flipping it, they're going to be doing this stuff the whole lives, you know, working and, you know, but I would say, like, my kids, I teach them, like, don't get in this system where you get up in the morning, you go to work, you trudge to work, you do your work, you live for the weekend. No way. Find out what you're passionate about, what you really care about. It doesn't matter how much money you earn. Find what you care about. And then every morning that you wake up, be excited to go to work because you love what you're doing. And I see, you know, people like, I'm not condo- I'm not um, criticising people for drinking. It's just that I used to drink and I used to smoke and this, this, this that and the other. And I realised why I was doing it at the time. I wasn't happy. And um, now, like, I don't drink, I don't smoke. I live a really healthy lifestyle. Do you know why? Because I'm so content and so happy. I just get off on life. <laughs> and I think that sometimes people are like, you know, they're living like a fake world of, like, just like you get up, go to work, and people are just like, I mean, don't get me wrong, loads of people love the jobs, but there's a lot of people that just like, they're just getting through the day just to get home, earn the wage, come home, stick the telly on, watch the soaps that are just depressing, and it's other people's lives, don't think about your own life, get to the weekend, have a load of wine, go, you know, get wrecked and just kind of distract yourself from it's life. a lunatic asylum it's what you're describing is a lunatic asylum and i see it every day <laughs> because manchester is one of the biggest cities in europe it's a massive yeah. city greater manchester you're talking millions of people and i'm lucky yeah. that i i i do this every day yeah. i've tried over the years i mean i've been in the media for many years but there have been times when i've been out of work and i've had to do other jobs i, I did yeah. a job where i worked for a company i was in an office with all these kind of temporary walls up and I was surrounded by people yeah. on the phones and it nearly yeah. killed me. You know, it, it, it yeah. nearly, yeah. not because I'm lazy, because I didn't want to work, but it was depressing and soul yeah. destroying. And we see people on the buses, on the trains, they're horrified by what they have to do to live. And um, yeah. I think schooling, at least um, schooling in the buildings of the state, is a way to basically get children as they grow into young adults to acquiesce to that because it yeah. is a lunatic asylum it's insane yeah. to live like that it is yeah it's absolutely crazy but people get so conditioned by it like you say from from day one in school let's get them all conditioned so that when they step into adult life they don't even see a transition it's like just carry on carry on carry on and they don't notice that that and it's like but some of us appear to be just it's like you're out of the matrix isn't it yeah and you're kind of like going and actually sometimes I know this sounds really bad coming from me but sometimes I've said to my husband I'm like I wish I was more ignorant sometimes because it's like so frustrating living in this world sometimes and I'm looking around and I'm like come on you know and it's like sometimes I just think I wish I didn't know this much I wish I didn't see this much and realize this much because it can be a bit overwhelming and that's when like when an opportunity comes up to stand up and go do you know what guys wake up wake up everybody come on look around you look at what's in the media they're scaring you be scared because nuclear bombs might go off and this might go off and this might happen just live in fear we'll look after you we're the government we'll take care of you you all just go about your business and we'll look after you. And then people are just like, oh, I'm so scared. I'll just I'll just drink a big bottle of wine and I'll just go and yeah, I'll immerse myself in TV and I'll just, let's have a look in this gossip magazine. Look at the magazines. People read like That's Life and Take a Break and all that rubbish. Yeah. Horrible, horrible stories. Why would you want to read these horrible stories? Someone was saying to me recently, this lady, she was like, yeah, I've just been sat down reading this magazine. She went, horrible, horrible things. She went, you don't want to read them, but you just can't help it, can you? And it's like rubbernecking at a car crash. And it's like 
wake up again wake up put the flipping magazines down turn the telly off because it's a load of rubbish right <clears throat> actually wake up look around and think to yourself am i happy am i actually happy and that's one of the main things about what i'm trying to do with my kids is go be happy like be really happy but then don't just sit in your own happiness help other people as well reach out to other people what can you do to help other people and there's huge interest Gemma. and there is huge interest in this just just one other question there's been lots of the yeah. same type of question coming in uh, mr mojo tweets what happens yeah. if the children are i love this what happens if the children are acting the bollocks we used to have to write out the school it's a great irish way of saying what if they're acting yeah. out we used to have to write out the school rules i used to have to do that too write <laughs> out the school rules is, is yeah. there ever any time when you do have to say right for today then i prefer yeah. you didn't play with that toy because you said something to your dad you shouldn't have said it there has to be consequences does that ever come up Gemma? or how does that work not with the older ones, no. So, like, Zephyr, who's far, is absolutely crackers. Like, absolutely <laughs> crackers. And the only way... He is, like, he's nuts. And the only way to kind of get him to, like, focus... Because he's, like, some wild animal. The only way to get him to focus is to go, Zephyr, in the end, I have to go, Zephyr, if you carry on doing this, you're not going to be able to go on your computer game. And he'll go, oh, okay, mummy, yeah, okay, okay. And then, about, like, five minutes later, he's back doing what he did. But that's just him. And I have completely, like, that is just the way he is. I completely accepted that. And so what I just do is I just keep at it patiently. And I just have to say to him, Zephyr, if you carry on. And then if he does carry on, he won't go on his computer game. Because I do want him to know that in good, life, there good. will be consequences for your yeah. actions. If you if you just are antisocial as hell and are, like, being obnoxious and peeing people off, like and you're genuinely out of order there's going to be consequences for those actions so they need to know that they can't just run riot um so this is the way i've been with them in the young years i'm kind of like first and foremost i will sit them down and talk to them i'll reason with them i'll explain to them and then if they were to continue to do that then i would be like okay well there you go the discipline is issued now so the other day i banned him from his computer game um and then he was like Oh, I'm I'm sorry, mummy. I'm sorry. Mommy. I was like, I know you're sorry, Dan. I accept your apology. And then he was like, Can I go on my game? I was like, No. Good and he was for like, you. Oh, yeah. And he's like, yeah, good for you. Yeah. back to me. But but I love you, mummy. I love you. I'm really sorry. I'm like, I know you love me, and I love you too. And I know you're sorry, and I accept your apology. But I told you there would be consequences, and there are. So you'll have to just accept that. And tomorrow, if I say to you that you will face a consequence you will know that I mean it. And there you go. So you've got to issue, you have got to issue discipline because, you know, the need to know that the consequences for your actions. Well, of course, be because, for yeah, what we do. because there will be times in the future when they won't be with you uh, or Lewis and they, yeah. they might say something they shouldn't say and somebody yeah. might talk back to them, you know, or, or it could be at yeah. work or it could be whatever. That's really important. There is a question coming in. You probably won't be surprised that this one is being thrown at you on this particular programme. So that gives a clue. You don't have to answer it, by the way, at all. Okay. And I mean that. You don't have to answer it. Um, where, <laughs> what is it? It's not that serious, <laughs> but it might come across as a bit cheeky. Were they vaccinated? Okay. Were they vaccinated? Yeah, they were, actually. As, as, um, as, and as I Muslim, absolutely yeah. wrestled with it. And even now, I don't know if I did the right thing. Because we actually do have... Um, in many of in a few of the kids in this family we do have traits of asperger's i would say they're on the spectrum um and you know you think is that why um you just don't know do you you, have you don't to make know a decision one way or the other yes you don't, you don't know. know no and i, I hate and you know i love this program and i love the audience but i hate these know-alls who know everything about everything look i'm concerned about it and we made a decision that we wouldn't but it's easy yeah. for us to make that decision because we've heard so much and all of that but some some, yeah. some of my closest friends have had young babies recently they do listen yeah. to the program and they went the vaccination route as well people need to stop yeah. you know acting like they know everything it might have nothing to do with them being on the spectrum you just don't know but um you just I, don't know yeah you just exactly. don't know. and that's why do you know what i think i just wanted to go back as well you know and about the just don't know thing you know the guy who said um 
well what about when they're older um you know what about when this that and the other and as if he kind of knew like what that there would be like some issues and it might not work out and things like that from his perspective um and it's like how does he know is he is he homeschooling kids has he got a 14 nearly 14 year old that he's homeschooling no and this is it everyone's got an opinion on everything haven't they and i try like when i said earlier about my opinion about you know being registered um with regards to with the with the government on home education that is purely my opinion I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I just that is just what I think. And I also have respect for the people that don't agree with homeschooling because do you know what? They're basing that on all they know. So, Absolutely. you know, the other day I had um, a debate with um, a headmaster on, on TV and um, it was actually the nicest debate ever really because he was just really nice and everything. Um, but what I realised in that discussion was that his opinion... Uh, there's a generation gap between us for one thing um then his opinion is based on the fact that he was a headmaster in a, in a public school he is dealing with vast quantities of children who were then going home and receiving a variety of different parenting experiences his experience of dealing with children in education and socially is completely different to my experience so that is why we must absolutely respect one another's opinions because we're all coming from different places in in life and sometimes like you can both have opposing opinions but you're both right <laughs> from your own perspective of course does that make any sense it makes 100 percent sense to me you 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 make your decisions based on how you experience life and experience yes. things and you apply those experiences to your decision making process it's a very i mean it's an absolutely yeah. wonderful and mature way to look at it um Jim, and my what, children will make their own um, decisions they might grow up they might not be vegan they might not homeschool they might not have children at all coming from a big family i don't know like but whatever they choose their experience is based on this upbringing my experience is you know based on my upbringing they will make their own decisions and I do not know what it's like to grow up in this family. I know that I, you know, I only know what my experience of it is. They might grow up and go, oh, I'm not having loads of children. You know, it's like, you know, I don't know. They might go, oh, you know, this isn't for me. And I will totally respect their decisions. We all have to respect each other. And that's it, isn't it? Do you know, I had some horrible comments on um YouTube, um, not on my stuff, like um, on other people, vid people's videos of us that they shared and people tagging me in it. Like, and I know there's trolls and stuff about, but like really horrible comments, like with swearing in um, and calling us this, that, and the other. And I just thought, whoa, you're, you're criticizing us, but you're being vile about another human being. And I would never, ever, ever do that. You know, like I have respect for all human beings um, and even people right that have problems and might seem antisocial and might do things that we think oh you shouldn't do that they they have their own reasons behind what they're doing they've had a different upbringing to the person next to them their brain works differently to the person next to them we can all be judgmental where's that going to get us it's hot it's awful why don't everyone just leave each other alone why don't people just respect each other's opinions and lifestyles like this is i have my opinion about school well there's a bit of jealousy there Gemma. Else. there's a bit of jealousy there i mean look life is brutal for a lot of people and i'm guessing yeah. that when you're on this morning or another program and i mean you look radiant to be honest i mean i well, mentioned earlier you. on you've got this radiant um glow about you real peaceful you look very serene the children are beautiful yeah. i suppose people Probably deep down, some people think I'd love to do that, and that that can make people angry. So rather than deal yeah. with that, I'd love to be like Gemma. Well, it's easier to say, "Ah, you effing this and you effing that, and your children are yeah. crazy and all that sort of stuff." I don't know why people well, are like that, but that's the way they are. We're nearly, by the way, well, we're very. To think about is yeah. like that I was beaten up as a kid, and that I didn't have nice clothes bought from it, and that you know I was very controlled. Um, that's you know they should I would ask them now if they're listening to heed that I did not have a good experience growing up my mother was not very nice my father's passed away now um, I'm much happier now he's not around 
and my mum is not in my life. She's I will actually well no, mum's not in my life. Um, Would you like her you to know, be Gemma? Would you like her to be back in your life? I I wouldn't like her to be in my life, but I wish I had a mum. I really wish I had a mum. Um, but I wouldn't want her to be in my life the way that she is and the whole experience I've had with her. But people need to people need to think. You know, they might think, oh, she looks happy. She, lo- I am, I am really, really, really happy. I feel really detached from the life that I had before. Um, but I wasn't like this back then. It's taken every. Oh my gosh, I've had so many knocks. Like so many knocks. I've thought to myself sometimes, like, why am I not crazy? Like, why am I <laughs> yeah. not nuts? And do you know what? It's because once upon a time, I realised. Now, it's not that nobody cares, but I thought it's just, it kind of occurred to me, I was like, you can lose the plot, Gemma, and and just turn to a mess and a disaster, but that's only going to affect, this was before I had kids, but that's only going to affect you. No one's going to step up and sort your life out for you. You have to take responsibility for yourself, no matter what you've gone through. And don't get me wrong, though, there'll be people that have gone through far worse things than me who I can't even imagine how they would reconcile with that it would be flipping you know very very hard but I just thought to myself what are you going to do you're just going to like give up and ruin your whole entire life or are you going to actually just take responsibility for yourself and deal with stuff and from then on it's just any knock that's come my way I've just gone all right well I'll be upset about that for a, a period of time but I will keep on going Um, it's like now I've got like um chronic fatigue syndrome I have fibromyalgia because um all the bad experience well this is a theory that they have is that perfectionist types like me who work very hard keep pushing through and also um that it's all it's like traumatic experiences can contribute to this so as a result like I'm I'm flipping you know and that's it like I look healthy because I am because I work really hard at being healthy but I'm also in pain a lot of the time I'm exhausted um but I'm just like, do you know what? Okay, so that's the way that is. But, you know, I'm just so blessed. I look at my children and I just think I am so absolutely blessed. And I just choose to, I just choose to be happy. I choose to be happy. I choose to make the most of life. I choose to think positively. I choose to care about other people. I choose to care about the world. It's a choice. Like, it really is a choice. This is, I think this is what it all boils down to. You have a choice. Are you going to be happy or not? Even in any situation that you are in, you have a choice. Pretty much, you know, I mean, there'll be sort of people that feel like incredibly trapped. I'm not trying to, you know, claim to know. Or what belittle it. I understand. Like. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. No, I do get that. Gemma, we're, we're, we're about 60 seconds away from going <laughs> off air, by the way. Um, that was, um, it was wonderful to listen to that. It really was. And, uh, the, if anybody wants to see pictures of uh, Gemma and the family, uh, you know, don't feel in any way voyeuristic. They're out there. They're on uh, the national <laughs> newspapers. No, but they are. I, I would, you know, you, you wouldn't be saying, oh, go, go and look at pictures of the children. It sounds a bit weird, but uh, the photographs, <laughs> the, the photographs are out there. And um, the children yeah. are, the children are beautiful. And uh, uh, so are you oh, and yeah. uh, and your husband, Lewis. You look absolutely fantastic. It's been an education listening to that. And I don't um, in the least bit patronise you when I say, do me a favour, stay in touch, and when there's anything to tell us... Yeah, that would be great. It'd be nice to have you back on, Gemma, I really mean that, uh, and uh, and, to oh, hear, and to hear more about it. A great story. I think that, um, like, if I was... I just want to sum up... Do, really, go ahead. It's just two points, is choose to be happy and respect other people, and that's what it all boils down to, really, isn't it, at the end of the day? 100%. Do do give a regards to, to Lewis and to the children whose names, I remember about four of them, so I'm not even going to try and say the, <laughs> the seven names, but, um, and, and continued success with it because it looks like, yeah, of course, it's got its difficulties as well as you've been describing, but it looks like yeah. it's wonderful and they're going to thrive and benefit from it. It's been an absolute joy to speak with you, Gemma. Thanks so much it's for been coming really on. It's really lovely speaking to you as well. Thank you so much for having me on and I've really enjoyed talking to you. It's been great. It was an honour. Let's do it again. 
Cheers for that. Yeah, let's do it. Thanks, Gemma. Bye for now. That was um, Gemma Rawnsley. Gemma is based in Hebden Bridge in West Yorkshire, which is a beautiful part of the world, uh, telling us there about her seven children and her husband, Lewis, why they decided to go the home education route, how they did that, uh, the trials and tribulations of it, the attitude of the national media to it and the attitude of other people to it as well, why it's been the best decision, I think, uh, that they've ever made. Wonderful story.